Hi, I'm Gordon Waite. I'm working on a five and a half inch elliptical secondary mirror. Obviously this is a flat mirror, it doesn't have curvature, it's a perfectly flat surface, surface that we're trying to manufacture here. Uh, this is a five and a half inch minor axis, the small way across, and uh, this actually is coming out of a 22 inch Renegade telescope, or going, going into a, a 22 inch. So uh, I've worked this flat quite a little bit, and I just wanted to show you one of the techniques. Uh, I test this with an interference test against a master flat, and I found that it has a little high zone along here and along here. And basically the surface comes up here, then flat in the center, and then comes up here again to the edge. Uh, it's a little less pronounced down at the end, and the tip here is pretty good. Uh, to fix this, I have prepared this little pitch polisher. And uh, it's a little unusual, I guess. It's kind of star-shaped, roughly. Uh, I faceted it in kind of the normal way, but then I cut out some of the edges and made the, the points on there so that the the action would be spread out a little bit better. Uh, I don't want a sharp edge on the on the pitch polisher. Uh, really, I'm trying to do a fairly small area on the mirror, and because of that small area, I wanted to reduce the size of this polisher a little bit. So uh, basically, doing a flat is not that much different than doing any other kind of mirror, a regular concave mirror. I use cerium oxide and uh, get the flat on there. I normally uh, spread the cerium around a little bit, make sure everything's good and there's no binding or anything. Uh, this, this pitch polisher has been cold pressed so that it matches the flat uh, and then brushed with a brass brush so that the surface is a little bit uh, uh, textured. So basically I'm going to use this pitch polisher over the area in question and I'm going to run the center of the pitch polisher over this area of the mirror that's too high. And basically this is just straight logical what you'd see is what you get uh, type of thought here. I use a little circular pattern to spread out the work a little bit and I isolate it on that area. And I kind of keep track of strokes. So if I do uh, four times back and forth on the left side, then I'll go over and do four times back and forth on the right side. Uh, with a flat, you tend to have problems maintaining symmetry on the flat. And so sometimes you'll have, like, the, the hill on this side might be bigger than the hill on this side, in which case I might do four here and two there, or some such uh, arrangement like that. But basically, I just use this little circular stroke, and then uh, come around and go up the other side with the same stroke. Now, I mentioned before that this part of the flat down here at, at the edge, at end, uh, doesn't have as big a problem. So in order to affect that a little bit, as I come down this side, I might put a little bit of pressure on the polisher, and then as I round the corner here, I'll remove the pressure, but still have the stroke in effect. And then as I come up, I'll, I'll put the pressure on again and come up the other side. Then uh, one thing that's important when I'm working the flat, you'll turn it the other way and do the same sort of stroke, but moving in a different direction. And of course, as I'm doing the stroke, I'll rotate the pitch polisher in my hand, go back the other way, and, and kind of what I'm aiming for here is to vary the stroke and uh, do it left-handed, do it right-handed, do it toward me, do it away from me, kind of do it in every configuration that's possible. I'll actually move the mirror to go sideways here and then uh, do the same stroke on the sides like this. And all this helps to keep the mirror uh, from, from getting you know too weird. The randomization of what you're doing is usually a good thing with mirror making. So it's a very easy process, and of course the testing procedure with one flat against a master flat and just looking at the interference bands is very quick and very simple. So with flats, uh, about the only delay you have is the time that it takes for the flat to uh, acclimate to uh, standard temperature before you test it on the interference uh, test. So there's a little bit of delay between each one of the sessions. But flat making can go pretty, pretty quickly, but you have a lot of small little sessions. So very interesting endeavor compared to making your, your normal primary mirrors.